Hello viewers and welcome back to Charlie's House Car Auto Repair. As you guys probably remember this one. It was but uh let's see. January of last year we did front brakes in this one. In November of 2019 we did the back brakes. Today we're back. We're gonna be putting the front brakes in it again. The car has 108,000 miles on it. We're doing a courtesy code scan as we always do. So as soon as this is done, we'll get right into the brakes. Yeah, we're all done scanning for the codes. And let's see, we got a wash communications, high power, low power. Communications, high voltage, low voltage, supply, chances are good. He probably ran the battery dead. Lost communications with the ECU, air conditioning. Now, we probably don't have any significant problems here, so I'm going to go ahead and clear all of these out for him. Uh, see if any of them hard fault. I see, I already saved that. I need to back up. Okay, clear DTCs. We got history. Clear. Clear all from memory. And everything's all cleared. Fault report. System clear. Run back. And we'll do another quick scan, health report. And while that's scanning, we'll get the hood opened up. All right. A little luxury around underneath here. Brake fluid's a little bit low, but that's going to come back up. And let's see. Now what we're going to do with this is we're actually going to bleed these brakes down. I'm going to pump them out at the calipers. And that brake fluid is getting kind of dark. So it's time to freshen it up. We'll take care of that in the process. Alright, we have no other codes. So we're all clear to go ahead and do the brakes. Now let's see, where did I leave off here? Hmm. Okay, well, we got our jack stands, we got a 14 millimeter wrench, socket wrench, 17 millimeter socket, 14 millimeter socket, uh, breaker bar, we've got the old brake fluid, new brake fluid, drain hose, pet trainers, brakes with hardware, the rotors, jack, gloves, goggles for eye protection. Uh, the let's make it official mechanics cloth wire brush for cleaning up the hub wire brush for cleaning up the bracket fluid film for coating the parts that we don't want rusting except for the bracket where we're going to use the permatex silver and our brake cleaner paper towels more brake cleaner uh, let's see file lubricant for the slide pins hangers for the calipers Got my coffee, that's an absolute must. And of course, we're going to be using our brake retraction tool today. And if you haven't already seen this in the video a couple of times, we're going to be giving one of these away. I'll include some uh, more information about it down in the description. So you guys can go back and find the video that I introduced this on and put in a comment down there and we'll see how that goes. We're getting real close, so we're going to be giving one of these away really soon. stuff shuffled around rag right there just like that close put the goggles up here for now get this thing jacked up get the wheels loosened up
Well, as you can see, these are worn metal to metal. The inside edge, that's all nice and smooth. This outside's right down to nothing. And we did these brakes 16 months ago. Let's see what happened here. See if there's any reason for this, which I don't think there is. He delivers pizzas with this thing, so that's a lot of hard stopping. We're going to be doing his back brakes again, which is my actually best video to date. We're going to be doing these again really soon. He's worn them right down too. While we've got the wheel off, let's do our inspection. No cracks in the brake hoses. I don't like that right there. Because vibration could do that, some damage to that hose. No cracks. No rust. Boot looks good. Bushings look good. This tire rod end looks good. Everything's nice and firm. Bushings look good in the front. There's ball joint. Boots a little crinkled, probably need some grease. Does not have a grease fitting, so it's a sealed unit. From lots of things, it's factory. Okay. Do not see any issues of any kind under here at all. Struts nice and dry. Springs intact. Nothing's broken, nothing's cracked, nothing's leaking. This side is in beautiful shape. So let's get these brakes apart. started on this pry these brakes back just a hair and 14 millimeter Seventeen millimeter on the bracket. trainer over here unless I completely destroy them I'll reuse them for a little while yep. considering that these are you know I'm not gonna get into how much I charge for this stuff but trust me it doesn't cover much I, I do these mostly for friends friends of friends Basically just you know, friends telling each other about what I do. That's about it. I don't advertise. Not yet. Well, eventually. Now, before I get my hands any dirtier than I already have, let's get those gloves on. Problem with really big hands, you can never get them in anything. Well, grab our huck, put our huck up over the top of the coil spring, get the caliper off. We'll bleed this out in a few minutes. Just hang it up on your hook, get it up and out of the way. This way here, I can swing it back and out of the way. All right, now, get this bracket the rest of the way off. Get these 
remove. Lay your bolts down on the trainer. Brake pads out. That one is worn down fairly evenly. Both sides are about one, two, about a millimeter and a half thick each side. And it looks like both sides are evenly worn inside to out. There's the one that's worn metal to metal. Top and bottom, front to back is pretty much even. So we don't have a caliper misalignment issue or anything. And the hardware. Hardware looks good. We've got all brand new ones to go on it. Pins. They are a little on the stiff side, but they do move. We're going to pop these out and clean these up. It never fails, no matter what tools I tell you guys you're going to need. I always forget something. We're going to be needing this. Clean up the caliper bracket. And if I put this on the pet trainer, it'll get stuck to it. Let's get these little hardware clips out. Just pull up on them carefully so you don't cut yourself. Everything is a hammer. You might be able to see some of this. Get the rust in here a little bit, not too bad. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the video when I did this. I don't know if I treated them with anything because there's no anti-seize on them. It may have been done with grease, but there's no sign of any grease left, so why? I don't know. Normally I would put grease on them, so maybe, maybe the grease is all gone. I don't know. But either way, let's get these pins out. I remember what I was telling you in the other videos, pull this little boot back first, this boot back first. Do not remove both sides at the same time, just in case you have one of those little rubber thingies in there. This one does not. Let's get this one cleaned off first. Clean it up real good. Inspect it for any wear. There's some wear, but there's no, no depth in the wear. It's just a little bit of a tarnishing to the metal. We're all good. There's no rust. Spray this down in here. Again, don't aim it towards your face. And we'll get that little gun cleaning brush clean that up in there really good the old grease out I'll put a little straw and aim it up into it it out and all the way down inside the bore is nice and clean fresh grease don't need a whole lot because again if you put too much in here you can hydro lock the pin in place and then your brakes get stuck and all sorts of bad things happen what I like to do is just wipe some of it off into the hole. You know, get it little, get it started in there, and then rotate evenly. Distribute your grease all the way down in. And when you pull back, you get that wrinkle, wrinkle. Gotta love it. Wrinkle, wrinkle. That one's all set. Now let's get to the other one. This one does have the little rubber piece on it, so you got to be careful with these. Wipe it all off. 
inspect that rubber piece make sure it's not swollen that happens when you use the wrong kind of lubricant make sure there's no tears cracks or breaks in it it moves it's snug it's not swollen it's in beautiful shape if it has any cracks anywhere any swelling replace it okay let's get this cleaned out again don't aim it towards your face Hold up a little bit. Down in here with the brush. Go away, B. Right. And guys, doing this on camera, this job can take you about two hours. If you're doing it without a camera, you've watched enough of the videos. Know exactly what you're doing, and you can probably do both sides in under an hour. That's being a little modest, but you can do it in under an hour. But don't ever skip these parts. Always, always. You know, if you live down in Texas, no big deal. But if you live up around here, you have to do this. If you don't, you'll end up seizing up your brakes. Bad things happen. So silicone doesn't dissolve the rubber. A little bit on there, not, not really a whole lot, but enough that you can distribute it and coat everything. And again, just Twist it, work it around. Oops, gotta watch out for that little rubber piece. Make sure that gets in there and started. Rock it around, twist it around. Do not force it hard because if you do, you can damage that little rubber piece. And right now, when I'm turning like this, that little rubber piece inside is not moving, just the pin is. Rock it back and forth. There you go. And eventually, it goes. There you go, there's your wrinkle wrinkle. Now let's get these cleaned up so we can put that new hardware in. Yeah, it's time for those goggles. Let's get those goggles put on. I almost feel like I should have a snorkel. Cover for this. done with the wire brush you still got some scaling and stuff going on in here this side's all nice and cleaned up now so we're gonna have to file this side a little and you get them cleaned up so they're just smooth. Go ahead and apply some anti seize to these. Keep it from rusting up more in the future. And then we'll put the hardware clips in on top of it. Get all your brake pads out of the box unwrapped. All your little hardware clips out of a hardware bag. You should have a total of eight of these little things here and these little black clips. You should have four. So we're going to have two for this side, two for the other side. Now these, there are two different styles. You've got the top and the bottom in and out. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort these out so that they are opposites. That one goes there, that one goes there. This way here we know that these four go on this side, these four go on the other side. So we have two of each for each side. We'll take these 
and these move them over to the other side. All right, and then the four brake pads. You want to inspect all four, to make sure they're the same. If there's any differences, you want to know which one's the outboard, which one's the inboard. And right off the bat, I noticed something very unusual with these. Can you tell me what's wrong with these? Now keep in mind these are brand new brake pads. See how these all have little ears? Where are the ears on this one? Why is there ground metal? Why is there ground metal right there and right there? Something tells me somebody bought these brake pads, tried to put them in, found out they won't work after modifying them. But fortunately, this isn't going to be critical because, and only because, in this particular application, this edge right here that the file is touching, this edge is the only edge that has any load applied to it during braking. These are just to keep it from chattering around and holding those little black plastic or black metal clips. So, we're going to be able to use these, but if I had caught this in the parts store, I would be giving them a, a little bit of a hard time about it because there's no excuse for that. But otherwise they are identical. There is no difference between them, so their inboard and outboard are exactly the same. So, let's go ahead put two on the other side. And get a little deeper into this. Let's get some of this junk out of the way here. These, oh, there's one. Do have the little metal clips on them. And as you can tell by the piston mark, it's the inboard pad. And again, always the leading, yeah, with this one here, leading edge is your uh, where your piece goes on. If you put it on the trailing edge, it just snaps it off. So, let's get this old rotor off of here. Be careful the edges. You could get cut on those. Inspect it. It's nice and, actually it was really nice on this side. But see all of this rust? And a year and a half of wear for a pizza delivery driver. One and a half years. So get that out of the way. Get the new one. <clears throat> Remove it from the bag. Somebody has already got open. It still has the oil on it, so that's good. Now, uh, let's see. That's that's not too bad. Now, let's clean this up first. As soon as that's dry, we'll hit it with some fluid film. In the meantime, let's get this rotor cleaned up. Again, what I like to do is just spray the brake cleaner right on the cloth. And give it a wipe, good wipe down. pads and it will ruin them so make sure you get all the oil off and 
spray a little bit of the fluid film on the on the hub. Just enough to get a little bit of a coating on it. And you can go ahead and put your cleaned rotor on. And if you want to spin a lug nut on, you can to hold it in place. Bracket. Get this bracket anti seized. Again, just the surfaces that the hardware comes in contact with. Just enough to give it a little bit of a light coating. So it looks just like that. Get everything in here. And do the same thing on the other side. Just a light coating of it. You guys down in Texas don't need to do this stuff. In the salt belt, you don't have a choice. Not if we want the brakes to last for any length of time. So the caliper bracket is now ready. Put the hardware back in it. Just remember when you're putting your little clips in that the, the curved part faces out. Like this. Snaps down in place. There you go. So all four clips are in there. Now the bracket can be mounted back on the vehicle. Let me go grab a blue uh, thread locker. And now let's get one drop on each. One drop, not half of the container. Wow. All right. And we'll take the bracket, bracket over the rotor, line it up, and get our first bolt started. We'll get our second bolt started. Now you can spin these in any means you want. I highly suggest spinning them all belt, both in very lightly and then once they're both in then snug them down. Don't make one tight and then the other one. Get a little bit of wiggle left in it. That way there you don't warp the bracket. Go back and tighten up both bolts. I'll put the torque value right here. I like to use the breaker bar for this one. These are these are up there. Now, when you've been doing this long enough, you can actually feel that bolt start to flex. And you know that's where you want to stop. Alright, brackets on, brackets ready, brackets all lubed, pins are all done. Hardware clips are in place. Now we gotta take care of the brake pads. And we're gonna take this one here that's been ground up and we're going to use this on the inboard so we're not putting any uh, pressure on the lack of ears. We'll put that one there so we're going to have to put the little clip up on this side. Just like that. And then slide it in. And no, I am not putting lubricant inside the hardware because again, around here, that just collects a bunch of junk and make sure that it moves fairly easily. 
and then the outboard pad again leading edge sits this way leading edge is the top and then roll this one in same way make sure that moves nice and easy Something's over here is not right. There we go. Just didn't have it over a little tab back there. But that's why you always make sure that you got your movement and everything sits flat before you start assembling everything. Now, we got all of this together. We're ready to put the rotor or the caliper back on. But, we're going to be bleeding this caliper out. So we're going to pull this little rubber pin right here off. And a little rubber cover on top of the bleed screw, if I can get it off. Alright, we got that off. Then again, another tool that I forgot is we need... A, uh, see, seven or eight millimeter to get that off. All right, now we're going to take a pair of needle nose pliers. We've got some fuel line pushed over the end of the pliers so that they won't harm the rubber hose. And what we're going to do is we're going to clamp the rubber hose going into the caliper. Okay, and I just did that with my fingers pressure. We're not fighting with it. Now we're going to loosen up this bleeder screw and it's probably going to be a stinker so what I like to do is tap it with a heavier object like the handle of the wrench because this usually won't break them there we go that loosened it up nicely we'll take our hose now if you noticed right now with this position the bleeder is down at the bottom that means if there's any contamination or any sediment or anything in here, it's going to be at the bottom of the bore. So we're going to tip this backwards a bit, like this, so that we can get this to the lowest point. Put our little hose on here. And then this is going to go into our recovery. Make sure your label on empty one is old. Put your hose down in there. Drop it somewhere where hopefully it won't fall down. And what we're going to do now is, using the piston retraction tool, we're going to put this into the caliper and push the piston back. Now it's going to be a little tricky because of the way I've got everything situated. Let's see if I can do this without knocking all the fluid on the ground. And yes, these are some weird shaped rotors. I've never seen anything with a V groove in the top. Okay, hose clamp. Or the hose is clamped. Bleeder is lo loosened up. Hose is in the recovery. So I'm going to take this. Rotate this all around so you guys can actually see what I'm doing here. Put the hose down the other side. Turn this around this way. All right, hose is down. There, we'll put that right in here. There, that's not going anywhere. That's down at the lowest point now. So now we can go ahead and push piston back. Now this is a dual piston caliper retraction tool, but if you set it off to the side like this, you can still get both sides of the piston. And then you can go ahead and start squeezing it in. And we'll back off the uh, bleed screw a little more. way here we can squeeze the old fluid there we go that's 
working. We can squeeze the old fluid out. And be very careful about the boot that it doesn't bubble up anywhere. If you don't want to pinch it. Make sure the piston's retracted all the way back. While holding pressure, tighten your bleed screw back up so it doesn't suck any air in. Go ahead and remove the bleeder hose. And again, still holding this. Tighten up your bleed screw. And then you can release the tool. Take your caliper back off of the hook. Take the hook out from underneath. Bring your caliper down, put it in place, and set it there for the moment. Make myself a little room to move around here again. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some anti and we're going to put it inside the ears of the brake caliper. And we're going to put a little bit around the piston just to help, down, help cut down on any squealing or squeaking. Again, very sparingly. We just want a light coating on things. Just around the edge of the piston. And then the ears. Now, just so you guys can see, I'll give a coat this side, this side, and on the piston. We'll lower this down on. We take this clamp off now. We don't need that anymore. Line that up, get your pins in place. And then blue thread locker again. One drop on each. One drop on each, that was a little much. Put this silly little black cover back on. As soon as I figure out where I just put it down. Ah. Where did I just put the little cover? Uh, white. Get that snug. And go ahead and bring your bolts all the way in. Back double check your bleeder screw, make sure it's tight. Not too tight, just a little snug. Don't forget your little rubber cap. I like to put just a tiny little dab of grease in the cap and then put it over the bleeder. That way there the bleeder doesn't get all rusted up inside. Push your brake pedal down a couple of times. Nice firm brake pedal. Now we can go ahead and put the wheel back on. And let's see, am I missing anything? Nope. Uh, let's see. I'll just clean this up, get the other side completed. All done. It's that simple. Nice, easy, full brake replacement. Done in about an hour, hour and a half without the camera. So I'll leave it at that. So if you guys 
found this one helpful, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And don't forget, you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. And again, if you guys are concerned about torque values, put it right here. This side's all done, now we can finish up the other side. Thank you. 